In this video, I'll be explaining what these cards are and how you can play each game. Plus, I'll be sharing more ways to play, so stay tuned. I think a common misconception is that these cards are simply task cards, and that's just not true. These cards can be task cards if you print them on one side and number them, but they are so much more than that. These are self-checking cards so that your students can play independently. Each card has a value so that you don't have annoying dice being thrown around your classroom. Here are the four main ways that I use these cards. Way to play number one, board game. This is the most common way we use our game cards for our classroom. We use the simple board games. I keep these folded on colored paper inside each photo box organizer container. Students take turns answering questions and moving along the game. The first player to finish wins. Way to play number two, STEM to win. I love using STEM to win in small groups. In this game, students are materials based on their answers. I have students answer the question on a whiteboard with a dry erase marker. Then I give them a specific material from our STEM boxes. They usually earn about 20 pieces of something, but never more than 40 pieces. Once they've collected all their pieces, I give them a quick STEM challenge using only the materials they have earned. It's so much fun watching them get creative with a limited supply and it helps them relate to real world economics. Way to play number three, race to 20. This is a fun way to use the cards for independent practice. Students answer questions and use counters to cover each space. They can time themselves for fluency or they can race another player to see who gets to 20 first. Once they finish, they grab another set of game cards and continue on. Way to play number four, pick up sticks. I like to use pick up sticks for building fine motor muscles, but know that you can use this in other ways like with jacks or cup stacking, poppets. You can use it with sensory bins even. Students answer the questions and then they must pick the amount of that's shown on the card. It's fun and kids get into being competitive. There are more ways to play these games, so be sure you check out this blog post where I'll share more ways to play, plus a freebie with 20 ways to play. Check out the next video where I'll share how you can start incorporating these games into your math centers.